Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I just woke up to the saddest thing in the world. I mentioned it in a video like a year and a half ago, but that infomercial where the women in their 60s talk about how their crepey skin makes them sad. Brick <laughs> makes me sad. It's like the saddest thing ever. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm actually getting like watery eyes. Like, they're not like, how do I say it? They're not like being pathetic. Like they're not playing it over the top, um, but they're like sincerely expressing how sad getting older and getting thin, crepey skin with those little super thin wrinkles on it uh, gets them. And I'm like, I feel so bad for them. I don't know if that stuff really works, but I feel so bad for them. Anyway, this is fearless number four. And let's just, I, I, I know, I know you're excited. Carl Manvers is back, but let's just look at this cover and just realize what it is, how current year it is. There's no conflict. There's no drama. There's no mystery. It is a flat angle of an SJW with a self-impressed sideways smirk, whatever you call the SJW smile, fist bumping herself. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Marvel Comics in 2019. So anyway, Fearless is, uh, well, they talk about it, what, what it is. Thanks so much for reading the Fearless Anthology. They should say Zach, like, comma, Zach. I'm the only person who read all this stuff. Thanks so much for reading the Fearless Anthology, Zach. As part of Marvel's 80th anniversary celebration, we wanted to create a book staffed entirely by women. Why? <laughs> why, is, why is segregation a way to celebrate a company that up until SJWs took over was always diverse? Because there's an article right here Written by Trina, Wa uh, it's actually two short uh, stories by Trina uh, Robbins, Robbins, Trina Robbins, who's was way, way, way back in the day working there, and it's kind of a you know a fictional idea of a going to a convention where of course the guys like what a laugh. Everyone knows that there were no women drawing for Marvel in the Golden Age. There won't be anyone on this panel. I still can't believe that the uh, the incel terrorist guy is black. Like, I guess Trina Robbins is like, she didn't get the message about how the progressive stack works. Um, but, you know, it's kind of a cute little bit where all Fran Hopper, Ruth Atkinson, Paula Loth, um... And then uh, uh, Tarp Mill. So they bring up all of these writers and artists that worked at Marvel in the 1940s. <laughs> so, so I had a friend who was talking about like how galling he found it. He's like, um, he's like, you know, Luis Simonson and you know Anne Vicente, all these airhead, you know, milkshake girls had to basically erase all the women who worked at Marvel like 20 years before their fathers were born. They had to erase all their accomplishments and, and I, he used this great phrase so they could act like professional assholes. Now suddenly, and this is like a milkshake girl year five, now all of a sudden they're like, um, yeah, like there were women before us Yes, that's what we were saying. When you were con congratulating yourself for like, um, women at Marvel? We're like, yeah, circa 1943 until this year with every single year in between. So, as part of Marvel's 80th anniversary celebration, we wanted to create a book staffed entirely by women that would spotlight not only our incredible female characters, but also the massively talented creators who work on them and they got teeny howard and sean and mcguire and and this this uh claire rowe who draws people looking like that like seriously 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, you could <laughs> completely convinced me. Um, this is also the first project that all the women currently working in editorial collaborated on. It was a true labor of love, and we hope you enjoy it. Well, it was shit. And if this is like your, uh, just like, uh, what was the deal? Uh, Charlie wanted to get hired. He went to go visit D at a school, and he wanted to get hired as a janitor. So he applied, and his resume was a picture of Bruce Jenner. <laughs> And then, and then the uh, it's the one where he kept asking to eat the eraser. That, that's basically this. This is your handing someone a, a picture of Bruce Jenner as your resume. Like women have been at Marvel for eighty years, and they have never turned out work this shoddy until Marvel started hiring based on plumbing based on fallopian tubes and not based on talent. All these women back in the day, Marie Severance and Flo Steinberg and Fran Hopper, they were all hired on talent and merit, even if they were in you know administrative positions, creative positions. Then all of a sudden, I mean, Shauna McGuire is, is writing like four Marvel books a month because like last year, Marvel's like, oh, a lot more women on everything. So Teeny Howard's writing on what, like five books? Do they have any real fan base? No. What are their sales? Trash. What are their um, books? Well, th th this is their story. Um, like I'm a woman, and like you're women, and that's like awesome. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> Women worked at Marvel for 80 years and 76 of them for talent and merit and sales. And now this, this is a testament to all the women. You go, Sarah. You go, Annalise, Lauren, Kathleen, Shannon, Alana, and Lindsay. Go get some milkshakes. Like, this is embarrassing, dude. Uh, yeah, so then they just repeat everything they said in the first one and the second one. Yeah, okay. So uh, anyway... Um, it's an anthology, so you know it's going to be. They had one story, this campfire song, that was in all four issues, and then they had other ones that were like you know, stretched over two or just one and done. And this campfire song is probably the most pointless comic I've ever seen. Each uh, chapter was like 16 pages, um, so uh, it's like 64 pages of blather. There's a summer camp that's been, but you scrub every sign of the camp off the internet. You hide what you do here. Uh, so there's an internet, or uh, there's a, well, no, there's a non-internet um, camp where uh, women talk to women about how they're like women, and but they look like men. Look. Hey, look. It's Carl Manvers. She's so crazy. Um, but yeah, there's absolutely no point to it. The actual conflict, which was a real half-ass alien invasion that they easily uh, repelled and quelled uh, that finished in the third issue and then we get 16 pages of this but I can't take you all to space and not all of you would want to go so what matters is what we do here together in this place we share what matters is that like <laughs> damn she didn't she t z zir zir does not skip leg day Transitioned from Sebastian Bach to Dave Mustaine. This is blank expression. Yeah, we are women. And women, well, they're women. And that's great. And we, what the hell's going on in this situation right here? Um, so then we get this short bus Quinjet. <laughs> and uh, this, this is classic. Okay, so watch. So the men show up to clean up and take away the aliens. And then on the next page... Carol Danvers is talking shit about him. Oh, uh, Carol, hey, r remember when you put him in a, a coma? Remember when he was in a coma because of you? Well, now she says, uh, Tony, give you any guff? Tony, smirk. Tony Stark is too smart to give me guff. I have never understood that expression. What is guff? Attitude. Back talk. Me greatest man in the world. Me very smartest. You pretty good woman. Just okay. 
Hey, I'm sorry he forgave you after you crippled him there, dude. Uh, so you think, oh, it's over. Like, the villains were defeated, the villains were carried away, but no, it just goes on forever. There's even this weird thing where uh, Kamala Khan leaves in the middle, even though she's been narrating it, but then she, I think she's still narrating it after she left. And uh, then we get body diversity, and uh, watch this. So Storm, who talks like a space alien, says, These were made of plant matter. Now they're sugar and gelatin. What is their purpose? And this obese woman says, To be delicious. You, she should say, To uh, make sure that my foot gets amputated before I'm 40. Um, diabetes. Uh, so then it just ends. It just... <laughs> They're all women. <laughs> oh, wait. That's, that's a little bit meta. They're all saying me, me, me. Um, so then we get into this absolute trash uh, story uh, by Teeny Howard that goes on forever. That's like, um, like trash in the ocean. And then we get the, uh, the uh, airheads working at Marvel suddenly realizing that talented women, they even bring up this one. My strip sold a million newspapers. <laughs> yeah. Back then, hey, 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 you couldn't just cry to your boss and uh, who's scared of you that you're going to go running to uh, uh, BuzzFeed if they fire you. Oh, gosh. C.B. Sobolski, he has to keep Alyssa Wong employed till the day he dies. Once you cuck that hard, once you use a freaking, you know, pen name, and then someone guilts you into hiring them because you called them racist. Like, you... dude, even when he leaves Marvel, he still has to employ her. Like, he's just going to have to, he basically has to cut her alimony for the rest of his life. Oh, what a bitch move. Uh, so anyway, Fearless. This is going to be uh, in every, uh, I don't know, let's say a quarter of the uh, libraries in the country. I've heard there's something crazy like uh, 18,000 libraries now. So yeah, it's going to probably get about 6,000 trades that are just going to sit there because in the, uh, the catalog for librarians, it's going to say, Fierce Women and Something About Science. And they're going to go, oh, oh God, I got to buy this stupid shit. Um, just awful. And it is, it's a complete insult uh, to all the women of 76 years of Marvel who earned their place with talent and sales and merit and professionalism to have a bunch of clowns uh, turn out shit and then congratulate themselves. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone uh, given to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo, your funding original content and an original lawsuit. And uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna review next. I don't know. Thanks for watching, bye.